here at the Sony booth with Mark. Now Mark, I haven't been able to go anywhere on the floor without hearing about the A7S. You guys seem to have come out with a really impressive camera system that everybody's talking about. So tell us a little about what it has to offer. Well, let me tell you about it, Tony. A7S is the latest member of our Alpha 7 family that we introduced last fall. The Alpha 7 and the Alpha 7R are now joined by the Alpha 7S. So this model is quite like the other two models in the family. It's a full frame, compact, interchangeable lens camera. Indeed, it's the world's smallest and lightest interchangeable lens camera with a full frame image sensor, as you can see right here. Very large sensor, very small camera. The real advantage of the Alpha 7S, however, is we've equipped it with a very special image sensor designed for sensitivity and very wide dynamic range. It's just 12 megapixels, but in the area of a full-frame sensor, that allows us to have very large pixels, which can gather a tremendous amount of light. So this camera's ISO range extends from all the way down to 50 to as high as 409,600. So available light photography with very, very low noise and very, very wide range from shadow to highlight detail is assured. So this is a camera that really is a tremendous advantage for both still photographers and videographers. We've also leveraged the sensitivity of the sensor for spectacular low light autofocus performance. This camera can autofocus in light as low as minus four EV. And that might be a new record. So the ability to focus and the ability to shoot cleanly in very low light or even no light is really the hallmark of this camera. Now, another key characteristic that we're able to realize because of the 12 megapixel count is when we're shooting video, we can read out every pixel without resorting to line skipping or pixel binning that really plagues DSLRs when you're shooting video. What most people don't understand is the high megapixel count of a digital SLR actually works against you when you're shooting video because typically those cameras will only be able to read out a single row of pixels for every few rows on the image sensor and that leads to artifacting, color aliasing and other problems which shows up in your video as moiré. So this camera is the very first full frame camera that can use the full width of the image sensor and capture both full HD and 4K without line skipping and therefore it's artifact free. So that together with the sensitivity and the dynamic range we think is really going to make it a spectacular camera. Now the camera captures full HD in the camera to media cards, to SD media cards at high bit rate up to 50 megabits per second in 24p or 60p. You can shoot AVC HD, you can shoot the XAVCS codec, you can also shoot a low bitrate MP4 codec if you want uh, because it also has Wi-Fi and NFC so you can transfer the low data rate MP4 file over Wi-Fi. It's got a lot of capabilities. So really like any format, so if you're shooting an F5 you have XAVC HD or XAVC. If you're shooting with like an FS100 or 700 you have ABC HD. And if you're shooting where you might want to edit on an iPad you still have that MP4. Capability. Right. You can even record a high data rate codec like AVC HD or XAVC and a low data rate codec like the MP4 uh, 3 megabit per second at the same time on the same card. Oh. So it's tremendously flexible. Speaking of flexibility, we use our E-mount, um, which has a very short flange back, so we have full compatibility with all of our E-mount lenses. But more importantly, E-mount is very friendly to third-party adapter manufacturers for, who are building adapters for, say, Canon EF or Nikon AF or Leica M or Leica R glass so that you can use a tremendous variety of glass on this camera. We offer 54 lenses that can be used with this camera both with and without adapters, but the world is pretty much your oyster in terms of the uh, various different mounts that you can use with this camera. And again, use it on a full frame. So that's really the, uh, the big advantage. Over here we're showing um, an example of this type of flexibility. This is actually an A7S in a rig um, together with a Zeiss uh, CP2 Prime, a uh, 85 millimeter T2.1 uh, in, a, in a full rig. And here you can also see the uh, Atomos uh, Shogun, which is an external 4K recorder which takes HDMI input. Rather than putting the 4K recording in the camera and making the camera very large and bulky, 
which is pretty much the requirement to cap, uh, record 4K internally these days. We wanted to maintain the size and lightweight of the camera, so we re intentionally record the 4K externally to an external recorder. And in the case of Shogun, it also oper opens up um, different codecs. So for instance, the Shogun will record an Apple ProRes or DNX. So it's a very extensible camera, very versatile camera, and it appeals to both still photographers and videographers alike because of its enormous sensitivity range together with its dynamic range capabilities. In addition to the camera itself here at NAB, we're introducing, uh, we're making a technology announcement for two models, a new XLR mic kit and also a 28 to 135 constant aperture servo zoom lens, which will also be great for videographers as well. So that's the A7S. Very good. Now I've got a couple questions for you. As, a, as an FS700 shooter myself, um, I have a Odyssey 7Q. Uh, do you know if there's any development where the 7Q could be potentially able to take that 4K signal? Well, we got a, uh, a visit from the folks at Convergent yesterday, and uh, we showed them the A7S, and they tell us that um, they're working on it. Very good. Um, now, I, I have a lot of E-mount lenses. Not many of them are full-frame capable. Are there going to be more full-frame E-mount lenses coming out in the future? Well, we've already um, introduced five E-mount lenses. We have a 35, a 55, a 2870 kit lens, a 2470 Zeiss, and we're just about to ship the 70 to 200 uh, G um, for full-frame E-mount. We've already announced that we're going to be introducing five more uh, full-frame E-mount lenses in calendar 2014, five in addition to the five that we've already announced, and then another five in uh, calendar 2015. So by the time of calendar 2015, we'll be up to uh, 15 full-frame lenses, and then all of the uh, APS-C E-mount lenses can operate with uh, the full-frame cameras as well with an APS-C crop. And interestingly enough, A7 can uh, deliver full HD uh, on both a full frame or an APS-C crop, and it can also deliver 4K on both full frame and an APS-C crop as well, because uh, you can obviously shoot 4K on the full width of the sensor, which is perfect for 8.3 megapixels needed for 4K, but you can also, if you are cropped to APS-C, you can actually upscale to 4K with the camera as well. So if you find yourself with a subframe lens, no problem, you can still shoot 4K. Great, because then that means you don't have to throw away all the lenses that you have just because you got a new camera system. Exactly. So tell me about this XLR adapter. How does it interface with the camera system? So what we have here is our XLR K1M. It's uh, really the um, front end, uh, audio front end of uh, many of our professional cameras. And what we do is we interface it with the camera with this connector here that allows you to bring balanced audio right into the record preamps of the camera. This is very important. Obviously, there's plenty of XLR breakout boxes which you can plug into a 3.5 millimeter stereo mini jack. In fact, we have such a mini jack on this camera as well, but through this multi-pin adapter, we can bring balanced audio right into the camera. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, develop a version of this that'll mount directly to the shoe so you won't have to use a separate connector. So that'll be under, that's under development now and that'll be coming to market soon. And then the other uh, uh, technology announcement that we had is the development of a new full frame servo lens, a 28 to 135 constant aperture F4 that will have a servo, a three speed servo, which will be great for full frame video capture. Absolutely. When I, when I heard about that, I got really excited because I've been looking for a cinema E-mount lens for a long time. Again, owning a 100, a 700, an NEX7 with a camera like that in my future, uh, not having to have a bunch of adapters hanging off the, end of, off the cameras is really handy. Um, what can you tell us about that lens? Is there, uh, is there an availability price point, anything like that? Not yet. We haven't announced anything for timing and pricing, and we haven't announced anything for timing and pricing on the camera, but we do want everyone to be very confident in our plans for full-frame E-mount lens uh, lineup. We'll have plenty of lenses and plenty of unique lenses as well to uh, offer unique advantages to photographers and videographers alike, especially like a zoom with a constant aperture. And, and I noticed on that lens, I know it's a 3D print, so it's you know, not even at a prototype level yet, but there, there is a switch for like optical, optical stabilization. So just because you're getting a cinema lens doesn't mean you're getting rid of some of the features that are handy by having a, uh, that electronic interface between your camera and your, and your lens. Exactly. We want to be able to have the lens to be fully capable for both video and still and offer some real advantages. So the servo is one example of that, image stabilization another, and then constant aperture as well. 
Um, one thing I want to talk about is uh, that 4K recording. There's, there's a lot of different variations of 4K out there. Uh, what kind of flavor are we going to be getting out of this camera? Yeah, in this camera, we are, are capturing 3840 by 2160, not 4096 by 2160. That's by design. Also, it's uh, 422 output from the HDMI, but it's 8-bit. Uh, we would, you know, that's the limitation of the camera. Um, now, you know, in my interaction with, with Sony 8-bit has been really impressive, uh, you know, using on the 700 and the 100, it's been able to hold up very well. Um, so that output then goes to the camera and you can choose, an, or to your recorder, you choose ProRes. Um, are there any, there's really not many other solutions, uh, DNX HD obviously doesn't have 4K right now, um, so ProRes is going to be the main option for most people when recording out. Yeah, and, and we would imagine that other codecs are going to step forward, uh, but in this camera, rather than put it in the camera, uh, we rely on an external recorder. Right. Well, thanks a ton for your time, Mark. Thanks very much. Special thanks to our sponsors for making our NAB coverage possible.